Hello and welcome to this session. This is Professor Farhat and this session we would look at the test of detail of balances for notes payable. We are still working within the capital acquisition and the repayment cycle. We looked at the introduction of this cycle. We looked at the internal control for notes payable. We looked at analytical substantive procedures. And in this session, we would look at the test of detail of balances. So the first thing we would like to look at is why, why are we skipping sub substantive test of transaction? Remember, we have a test of control. We have test, um, I'm sorry, substantive test of transaction and we have test of detailed balances and we have analytical procedures we've done with, with we're done with analytical procedures we're done with test of control and we skip kind of the test substantive test of transaction and the reason is Hello and welcome to the session. This is Professor Farhat. In this session, we would look at the test of detail balances for notes payable. We are still working within the capital acquisition and the repayment cycle, which we already looked at in introduction, test of control, and analytical procedures. In this, in this session, we would look at test of detail balances. Now, when it comes to test of substantive test of transaction, because kind of we kind of we're skipping over the substantive test of, test of transaction, these audit tests are part of control and substantive test of a cash receipts and cash disbursement. So simply put, for the transaction that takes place in this cycle, we do the audit when we did cash receipts and cash disbursements we already did, did earlier. The additional test of control and substantive test of transaction are often done as part of the test of detailed balance, which what we're going to be doing in this session. So in this session, we'll work on the test of detailed balances. Okay. So so how do we start with the test of detailed balances? We start by obtaining um, obtaining a client prepared schedule of notes payable and accrued interest, which we will see in a moment. And we have to keep in mind two things. The most important thing when it comes to uh, uh, to uh, notes payable is the completeness assertion. The existing payable are included. We included all of them. Nothing is off balance sheet. Nothing is hitting. And notes payable and the schedule are accurate are accurately recorded. The accuracy is important. So this is the starting point. The starting point is we ask the client to prepare a schedule. And this is, hopefully you can see this. Here we are dealing with this notes payable, XYZ companies. This is schedule AA4, and you would learn about this when you start auditing, which are the work paper numbers. Prepared by the client, approved by this individual, and this is the date it was prepared and the date it was approved. So this is the information. They have three loans, basically one from First National Bank, one from Second National Bank, and one from Third National Bank. This is where the loan were made, September 30th, uh, 2015. It's due September 30th, 2016. This loan was made September 30th, 2016, and it's due 9th, 30th, 2017, so on and so forth. The face value of each loan is $10,000. Oops, let's go back. The face value of each loan is $10,000. Uh, this is the uh, this is the collateral, I believe, the security, and this is the beginning balance of the loan. So this loan existed as of 2016, the first loan, because it was issued in 2015. Okay, so there was notice. This is the beginning balance. Let me highlight the beginning balance. So you see the beginning what the beginning balance looks like. This is the beginning balance. So this loan already existed. So the beginning balance is ten thousand. We made a payment of ten thousand dollar. And the balance is zero. Now, how do how did we know that we made the payment? Notice here it says, "Look at tick number three. Look at the tick number three. And tick number three says, examined, cancelled note, and or check. So the author examined the check that was paid and the note, and it says everything is good. The balance should be zero. And notice for tick four, agreed to confirmation received from the bank. Also, we received the confirmation from the bank, which we'll talk about the confirmation when we cover cash that. This loan has been paid. The interest rate is 4.75. 4.75 agreed to confirmation from the bank. The beginning accrued interest was 119. We expensed 356. We paid in total 475. Those two together. And the end of the year accrual for this loan is nothing because the loan is no longer with us. Therefore, we should not accrue any interest. And this is how you would read the other loans. The second loan, the uh, when we started, there was no loan. Then we added. $10,000 obtained and reviewed from the copy of the note and the permanent file. So we have a copy of the loan. 
So the ending balance is 10,000, the interest rate, um, how much we expensed, and what should be the accrued at the end of the period, which is 125. Okay, so notice how we are reading this, and notice this stick here. We uh, this says uh, we footed, so we 10 10,000 plus zero equal to 10,000. Here we footed, we footed, and here we footed, and we cross footed. Those are the tick, no, tick marks, so you could uh, you could uh, you can see the explanation for all of them. Okay, but this is basically part of the working paper. When I was an auditor, actually, you do prepare. This is this is as real as it gets when you are in the real when you are in the real world. Okay, now let's take a look at some some steps basically we kind of we went over the steps i showed you all the steps here but let's look at the program what we do so when we're to uh, a balance related audit objective when we want to complete the detailed tie-in notes payable and the notes schedule agree with the client notes payable register or master file and the total correctly added and agrees with the general ledger and this is what we mean by detailed tie-in yeah we added everything foot the notes payable list for notes payable and accrued interest which we did this trace the total to the general ledger and notice here what we said we said with this x notice here it looks like an x it says um, cross-footed and number five it says trace to the ledger we traced it to the ledger so everything looks good trace the individual notes payable to the master ledger ledger the detailed tie-in for the notes these are often done on a 100 percent basis because of the small population size or done by using audit software and there's a large volume of notes so when we usually audit the notes we audit them 100 percent because for one thing they're important and there shouldn't be a lot a lot of them if there's a lot of them use an audit software existence notes payable and the schedule exist you confirm the notes payable examine duplicate copies of notes for audit for authorization examine corporate minutes for loan approval so the loan does actually exist well that's not really an issue the existing objective is not important as completeness or accuracy so so companies don't put loan on their books if they don't exist so we're not really concerned with existence but we are concerned with completeness completeness is existing notes payable are included so they're not emitting anything this is the completeness assertion well we examine notes paid after year end to determine whether there were liabilities at the balance sheet so we'd look at Payments made after year end to see if they were supposed to be on the balance sheet. We obtain a standard bank confirmation that includes specific reference to the existing of any loans from all banks. And when are they due? So when we we send a note to the to our lender saying to the lender of the of our auditee and tell them, do you have any notes outstanding? And this will be part of the bank confirmation, which we will see in the next few session review the bank reconciliation for new notes credit directly to the bank account by the bank so look at the bank reconciliation and see if there's any money added in the form of a loan and this way we know that all the loans has been has been uh, reported the objective is important for uncovering both errors and fraud so it could be an error they did not include a loan or it could be worse fraud you're hiding off balance sheet that these three procedures are done on most audits. Additional procedure to search for omitted liabilities may be necessary if the internal control are deficient or if you are suspecting fraud. If you're suspecting fraud, then you will even do more procedures. But usually those are good procedures if internal control are working properly. We want to make sure that our numbers are correct. Notes payable are accru and accrued interest on the schedule are accurate. Well, examine duplicate copies of notes for principal and interest rate. Basically, you want to look at, see what the note is, what's the interest rate. Confirm notes payable interest rate and the last date for which interest was paid with the holder, with the bank, recalculate accrued interest. So basically what you do, see if the principal is correct, the interest is correct, check with the lender and recalculate. In some cases, it may be necessary to calculate using the present value technique, the imputed interest rate or the principal amount of the note. This is when the equipment is acquired for a note. We don't, we don't have to worry about this for now. Classification, we want to make sure if it's short term or long term, notes payable, schedule are correctly classified. Examine the due dates on duplicate copies of the note to determine whether it's current or non-current. And review the notes to determine whether there are any related party notes or accounts payable. Also, when, when it comes to classification, is, is, it, is it related party? If it's a related party, we should have a disclosure about it. Okay, classify it separately and have a disclosure. Cut off notes payable are included in the proper period. Include duplicate copies of the note to determine the date on, of the note. And based on that, you would know if it should be on the balance sheet or not. Notes should be included as a current as a current period liabilities when dated on or before the balance sheet date, okay? 
and obligation. The company has an obligation to pay the note. Usually that's easy. Examine note to determine whether the company has an obligation for repayment. If you, if you have a note on the books, <laughs> obligation is not an issue. Obligation is not an issue. So this is basically all about uh, that. The next section we're going to be we're going to be still working within the within the cycle which is capital acquisition and repayment cycle but we're going to move to the owner's equity and we'll start the primary concern in the audit of owner's equity what are the primary concern when we are dealing with common stocks dividend retained earnings so on and so forth if you have any questions any comments by all means email me or see me in class make sure to study hard complete your quizzes and your homework and if you're studying for your cpa exam study hard it's worth